The chance to shape your future is here. Learn and connect with exciting new opportunities. Are you ready for the next step? The chance to shape your future is here. Learn and connect with exciting new opportunities. Are you ready for the next step? The chance to shape your future is here. Learn and Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Raz, Raz Nazir, and I'm one of the directors here at Concilium. And in this session, we will be covering uh, getting investor ready. So I hope you find this session useful uh, and you can take away some pointers if you're in the position of um, getting yourself ready for any fundraisers and so forth. I'm stepping in for my colleague, Guy Rainish who was supposed to be delivering this session, but this morning we had a message from Guy saying he's not feeling well, so I've stepped in. So apologies in advance if I kind of uh, make a slight error or here, uh, but um, we should be fine. Um, the, the format for today's session is, um, we'll run through the presentation um, in the hopefully in the first sort of 20 to 25 minutes and thereafter then we'll leave ample time for any Q and A's. And we've kind of broken up the presentation into two bits. The first sort of part is about a bit of background about Concilium, who we are, what we do. And then um, we go into uh, the actual, you know, the, 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 the kind of the, the, the dummies guide of how to get yourself ready and prepped up for any uh, fundraising. So he, <clears throat> kicking off with a, a very, very brief and a quick introduction. Concilium is a, a, a boutique corporate finance practice based in Cardiff. And we began our journey back in 2014. Um, it was started by myself and my partner, Guy Rainish. And I, my background is banking and Guy's background is accounting and, and consultancy. And we saw a niche here in South Wales where there was uh, very few practices that were focused on equity funding. And we realized that together with our network, our experience that we were well positioned to fill this niche and we started our journey. And over the sort of the, the, the next sort of seven, eight years, we've built a very strong network and relationships with over a hundred private equity houses and other types of investor groups, which helps us to find the right partner for any potential entrepreneur or a company seeking funding. So as I mentioned, we're, we're a, uh, a corporate finance practice. So um, our core areas are business advisory, equity funding. Uh, we do a bit of property funding. And also we run uh, the tier one innovator program, which is part of uh, being an endorsing body. And that's a, that's a, 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 a kind of uh, service that we offer to the uh, UK Home Office, UK, uh, where foreign entrepreneurs who are looking to come into the UK and setting up businesses. Uh, but we, we, we pride ourselves that we, we've worked with uh, a number of entrepreneurs, business owners, management teams, and seen them through the various cycles uh, or various stages of, of their business cycles. And, you know, this could be where they're looking to grow and scale up. It could be that they're looking to uh, acquire 
assets, or it could even be collaboration where it's, it's a merger of two existing uh, companies or management teams. And there's uh, a transfer of technology. Uh, we're working in, a, in the we're in the middle of working off one transaction right now where it's a UK based technology company, but looking to manufacture in India. Um, and there's a collaboration taking place between the two where the manufacturing will take place in India, but they need certain uh, technology know-hows of how to do this. And this collaboration project is, uh, you know, being taken uh, over to India. We have a very experienced team um, who will always act in a professional, independent, and a confidential way. And, and we, we, we act as partners to the clients that we work with and we uh, lead, we help them to lead the transaction and, and inform them to the best of our understanding of what steps they should take next. The management team, uh, as I explained earlier on, uh, Guy, who comes from uh, an accountancy and a consultancy background, he, he was part of E&Y, and then after that, he did a um, almost a decade of work with Venture Wales, where he was uh, a lead advisor for some of the fastest growing businesses in Wales. And myself, uh, I started my journey in IT with a company called Logica, went over to HSBC Bank, spent uh, a decade there with uh, different roles, mainly in retail regulated products, and I spent the sort of the latter four or five years heading Islamic finance for Midlands and Wales divisions for HSBC Bank. And the third uh, director is a gentleman called Kapil Bali, who is also uh, a corporate banker. Um, and he comes with a wealth of experience uh, where he set up uh, specialists sort of groups and subsidiaries for some of the biggest banking groups in India. And he, uh, he would set up the, the subsidiary, get it up, get it working. Um, and then he would be seconded onto another project within the corporate bank. He's also an entrepreneur. He's got two uh, businesses in India, and he's also invested into UK based businesses uh, and he's part of our senior management team here at Concilium. Our track record over the last sort of seven, eight years, um, we've been a mentor and a, and a coach on the Welsh Government's Accelerated Growth Programme through Winning Pitch, where we've worked with many startups as well as some of the fastest growing businesses in Wales. Um, there's been a focus on tech, uh, sorry, on tech startups. So we know how to kind of draft business plans, financial forecasts, and, and get sort of startups um, ready uh, for their fundraising exercises. We've also done a lot of work in the city of London. We've been introducers to some of the second tier uh, exchange markets where you want to, uh, you would want to list uh, and, and get an IPO. Uh, we've also done work with some of the bond players uh, where you're raising bonds to uh, raise money. And alongside that, our typical work of working with P uh, private equity houses, VCs and family offices. Uh, I mentioned earlier, we're an, uh, an authorized uh, endorsing body appointed by the UK Home Office. And again, this is actually more to do with uh, business planning and validating their proposals uh, and helping them to set up businesses in the UK. And, and, the, and the criteria from the Home Office for these foreign entrepreneurs and investors are whatever business they open up in the UK, these businesses need to be innovative, scalable and viable. So our job is there then to business plans together with alongside them and their financial forecasts to ensure that these criteria are met. 
so now moving into the kind of the 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 actual um, what I would say you know some of the housekeeping when it comes to getting investor ready for 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 the market um, and if you're a startup if you're an existing business um, there's some sort of you know base points that you need to kind of just be aware of if you're a startup um, make sure you register for SEIS um, which is uh, a tax efficient vehicle for the investor rather than for the business but what it does it makes you as a business uh, much more attractive to the investor coming in uh, where the investor would get certain tax breaks uh, making his uh, investment very tax efficient and what we normally find if there's two startups and they're both let's say from a perspective of technology uh, growth uh, return of investment um, very much alike um, the business that is SEIS registered is more likely to get invest, uh, investment first because uh, the, the registration allows the potential investors to get tax break from the UK uh, HMRC. Whereas the other business, which may not be SEIS registered, uh, would, 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 would be behind the, the, the investment queue. And if you're an existing business, um, you may still qualify for an EIS registration, which is for established businesses. And again, it makes the, the, the proposal to the investment community uh, a bit more attractive because again, there are tax breaks both at the point of um, paying your annual tax bills, as well as um, if the investor was to uh, sell his stake in the business, let's say in three years time, five years time to make an exit, there's no capital gains on this investment. So you can imagine um, if, the, if the promises are being made to the investor that this is the real um, next Facebook or, or the next kind of um, unicorn where the scalability will be times 10, times five um, or even more, um, you know, capital gains can be a huge, uh, uh, you know, uh, consideration for, for the, the investor coming in. Uh, alongside that, uh, please review any R&D uh, spend that you've done um, and apply for those credits that you can you, you through your appointed accountant or any um, R&D tax expert. Uh, because what we normally find, especially where there's a lot of deep tech or, or a lot of um, R&D taking place, uh, if you're not aware, the, 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 there is uh, a, a, a kind of uh, an opportunity for you to claim some of that spend back through the HMRC. And, and that can ease, number one, your, your cash flow and also can reduce any capital raise that you're, you're wishing to, uh, to, to raise. Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll give you an example. We, we had a client that was looking to fundraise around 200,000 pounds. Um, they were a technology-based company. And over the last sort of um, prior, sort of seeding the market, they were really busy uh, in terms of developing a prototype. They'd spent almost 18 months in developing this prototype spent over so 50,000 pound in bringing this prototype to market and to sort of demonstrate that their product works, but they weren't aware of R&D. Um, and they came to us saying that we're looking to raise 200,000 pound for our seed round. And when we did some sort of uh, fact finding with them, realized they spent around 50,000 pound on their R&D year to date we then advised them to go uh, and speak to a specialist and they managed to claw back around 35,000 pounds off that 50,000 pound spend. So they actually went into the, the seed round not wanting 200,000 pound, but wanting uh, 175,000 uh, pound. That sort of uh, helped them with their immediate cash flow issues, but also um, 
it meant they, they gave less of their equity away at the seed position, which is um, quite, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a major point to be thinking about because at this point in time, when you do your seed round, your, your, your valuation would be the cheapest and, and more likely that you give most of your company away at the cheapest value. So it, it's a very um, pertinent point to think about. Uh, also explore any government grants and any other state support programs that might be available, possibly through any soft loans and any other provisions. And also, uh, you know, uh, talk to your bank um, to see and explore what options are available through them. And that's, these are all things that you should be doing before you go to the, what I'd say, the third party or the external investor community, um, just making sure that you've, you've explored all your funding options in-house before you go out to uh, the wider market. Oops. Uh, there's some housekeeping rules uh, that we like to see before you, you begin your journey. And this is all about having a clean structure uh, of your business uh, and to make sure that there are just, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're working from a clean canvas before you walk in into a room or an arena where there's going to be potential investors looking to scrutinize, looking to really go into deep dive and, and carry out various uh, due diligence on you. Uh, so please make sure that there are no, no, there, there's no skeletons in the closet. Um, you, you won't be able to hide your, your past if you've had, let's say, some issues regarding any other businesses or you've had um, any kind of, uh, you know, major uh, problems in, in, in running other ventures that you've, you, you've been in control of. Uh, it, it's useful to have your credit rating and banking commitments under control. Uh, it just gives the investor uh, a, 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 you know, a piece of comfort knowing that you're quite capable of running your affairs and businesses and your banking you know, in, a, in a responsible manner. Uh, I appreciate there could, there could be circumstances where, for example, you know, in the last sort of 12 months, we've been hit by a pandemic where certain market conditions can um, take things out of your control. But again, disclose these upfront, don't try to hide uh, and, and kind of think that you know, nobody will find out. If you've got other business interests and you have other roles, again, please disclose them. Um, what the investor wants to know uh, from their perspective is exactly what you're involved in, who you're involved with, uh, and if you have got any other stakeholdings or shareholding or any um, directorships or any other kind of non-exec roles, you know, whatever capacity, disclose them. On the one hand, it'll actually show that you're quite capable of running, um, uh, you know, uh, or a number of um, business uh, or businesses and, and, and ventures, but also... Um, you might have a, a broader skill set, which you're not demonstrating through the 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 the, the company you're trying to raise your your money for, with. Uh, make sure your 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 company structure is clean and attractive to the investor. And by clean, we mean uh, you know that there isn't you know um, if it's kind of uh, a seed round that you've got you know 15, 20 investors already. Um, or if you're an established company, you've been around for a few years, um, that you're managing your, 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 your back office uh, in terms of structure very efficiently. Please make sure your management team are on the same page, have the same vision. Uh, what we don't want is the co-founders or the, or, the, or the senior management team when they sit at the, at the boardroom, um, one is looking east and the other one is looking west. Before you start any fundraising, please make sure your, your, your shareholders, uh, your management team, and any other stakeholders in your business are all singing from the same hymn sheet, and they're all working towards um, the same goal, heading in the same direction. What we don't want is there to be any kind of 
almost uh, uh, you know hidden agendas that, that come out when you're talking to investors in open forums because obviously then that will just scare away the the potential investor. Uh, if you've got uh, you know any investors behind the scenes, again, have them on board, make them aware that you're going to the market, you're going to be raising more money on investment and make them aware that their share, current shareholding will be diluted. Um, so there's no shocks, there's no surprises. And they're, they're, you know, again, you, you're, you're bringing them with you on the journey rather than any surprises. Have any cap tables that you've got year to date, um, you know, up to date, readily available. So again, the investors can see who is who, who else is involved and, uh, you know, and, and who else they're, 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 they're partnering up with. If you've got any accounts, please file them, have them ready, have them file the company's house. Again, it's, it's very good to show and demonstrate to the investor community that you're on top of your business, you know exactly what's going on and have management accounts in place, which again, showing that you've got the, your, your hands on the pulse, you know, your, your, what sales are coming in, what your costs are, where you're at against your targets. And it's just a very good practice. Uh, this slide is about what, what do investors look for? Uh, uh, and in our experience, there are five uh, sort of, you know, fundamentals that potentially all investors look for. And that is, your, you know, the, the, the idea and the concept that you, you bring to the investor can disrupt the market, can disrupt the, the status quo. Um, market disruption is viewed as very valuable by investors. Uh, and very closely linked to that is the scalability. Um, you know, every investor is looking at a business which can scale from, you know, from let's say from one to, one to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 50 in very quick order. Um, and that, that is very, very attractive uh, to any potential uh, person sitting on the other side looking to invest. Team. Um, Nobody wants to uh, invest into a one-man band. They're looking at, cred uh, you know, credible teams who can manage the business and execute the investment and the business uh, business plan going forward. Uh, so that's very important. Uh, what the investor wants to know um, and wants to be reassured that they, if his investment comes into the business. That they are the right people with the right risk, uh, right skill sets, who can can spend his investment in the right places and take the business forward. What they don't want is, let's say, the founder who is also the CEO, overlooking the whole scope of the business. He's also the salesperson. He's also the marketing person. He's also the uh, you know the FD. You know that the, the founder is wearing you know four or five hats. So a the pressure is, uh, you know, he's carrying too much pressure. B, um, he's probably um, stretched in too many places. So therefore the focus into growing the business, taking the, taking the business forward is, is, is scattered. And, and that's one thing they, they don't like. Reduce the risk as much as you can for the investor. Uh, and that is by, um, you know, um, again, showing that you've got the right team, you've got other credible partners, you've got, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll go into this uh, in terms of how you reduce the risk in, in, in the future slides, but it's also about risk management. If you've, if you've got other elements, um, and that could be bringing more than one investor to the party, um, that again, helps to ease some of the, 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 uh, the kind of the, the, the pain that the investor may be looking at when, when viewing your proposition. Uh, have a data room available for your investor or, or your inv potential investors. Um, and we normally recommend setting up uh, an online uh, data room where you basically house all your data, all your documents, you know, especially your, your, you know, your business plan, your, your financial forecasts, 
any different versions of IMs or investor decks or any management accounts, have your data available, ready to hand. What you don't want is, um, you know, you, you, you speak to somebody, they ask for a, per, a piece of information, which they want to kind of um, review, and it takes you a week, two weeks, or even a month sometimes getting hold of that information and then sort of putting that information together in a way which reads well um, because you lose momentum. We always say have a data room ready with full of documents um, in different versions so you know uh, and you, you know, whatever question is asked, whatever information is seeked, we can, um, you can just go there and within a matter of minutes, um, the document is, is emailed over to the person seeking that piece of information. Uh, in the business plan, which is going to be uh, the major uh, document that will, you, the, the, any investor will go through in, in huge scrutiny and detail, uh, you know, make sure it, it, it has certain kind of um, highlights within it. Um, and, and again, these highlights are just kind of general, um, you know, pointers that we think that every business plan needs to have. And although this may seem simple, you know, you'd be surprised how many people still miss this. So each investor needs to have a business plan that covers at least a three year covering period. Uh, you know, it's no good having a business plan just for the next six months, 12 months. Um, the, the, the investor wants to see some longevity in this um, and, th and the three-year period is, is good enough. Make sure your, your business plan ties in with any related documents that you've got um, connected to the business plan. And normally this is your, your, your forecasts, your financials. So if you're in this existing business, make sure your existing data ties in with your business plan and your forecasts. And if you're a startup, from the point of start, you know, make sure your, your profit and loss, your cash flow, your balance sheet, whatever numbers you've got there, tie in with your business plan, ties in with your sales plan, ties in with your scalable plans. So it, it's it, it's almost like reading a story. It has a, it has a beginning, a middle, and an ending. And all three need to tie up really well and connect. And as you go from the beginning to the middle, from the middle to the ending, there is the the right appropriate bridges which takes you through that document in a good orderly fashion please give your company valuation um, a rationale of why you're valuing um, your company at that certain value that there is justification and real comparisons uh, which which the investor can take um, because we all know when you go into the market to raise money the first thing the value, uh, sorry, the investor will do is scrutinize your valuation. Obviously, from their perspective, they're looking to gain as much as they can by um, downgrading your value. And obviously, from your perspective, as a founder, as an entrepreneur, as, as, as the director of the company, you're looking to hold your valuation so you get the maximum um, value for the money that's coming in. Uh, <clears throat> please include all successes that you've achieved uh, in, your, in your journey so far. And this could demonstrate um, the evolution, the growth. Um, it could demonstrate, um, you know, uh, things in terms of, you know, pro uh, trophy clients that you've achieved um, and other certifications you've had um, along your journey. Uh, if you're a tech, it could be, you know, how successful your prototype was, your, 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 your beta trial was, your proof of concept was, um, what your learnings were, how you then adapted or upgraded your, 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 your technology uh, on the back of that kind of soft launch. Any, any kind of major transition that you've had in your business, please make sure that it's um, highlighted in the business plan. On the back of that, if you've been awarded any, um, uh, any kind of market recognition awards, um, it could be regional, it could be national, it could be very local. Please mention um, 
that you know you've you've had this recognition from normally they these are third parties who who who've come in reviewed and and and, and recognize your efforts so it's good to have that in in in, in your documentation uh, and any trophy clients uh, or strategic partnerships that you've that you you've 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 signed up to again allowing you growth allowing you scalability uh, uh, allowing you kind of you know seeding in the market or or a new sector which which again gives the investor comfort uh, and 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 you know makes them realize actually if you're if you've got some really good trophy clients there is some mileage and uh, in what you're doing and you know it also means that those clients have done their due diligence on the business <clears throat> they've done their due diligence and now spending their money with you so it's really good to have that in your business plan the other <clears throat> uh, document that you'll have which will go out to investors which would be um, your investor decks or your ims and again these are kind of um slideshows um you know me between anything uh you know 10 to 15 even going up to 20 slides but please make sure um these are very high level macro um slides what you don't want to do is replicate what you've got in your business plan into your investor deck because it's a uh, it's you know that's information overload on your presentation um that you'll give to any potential investor what they're looking at is macro points a flavor of what you're doing, a flavor of your your business. So um, you know they're not looking to read 30, 40 pages of of you know detailed information about your business. But you know again, have you know your how you're how you're disrupting the market, how your technology is scalable, your key USPs, what makes you different from the market, and normally a good competitor analysis is very useful. It can be very eye catching. And it can uh, really kind of show your innovation, uh, any IP value and assets you've got. Um, please highlight them. Uh, your, your your revenue generation, your sales. What do they look like? Pipeline of clients. What traction you've had in the market? Um, any other investors you've you've brought with you? Uh, so you could be the technology entrepreneur, but you had um, let's say a lead investor. Who came in and 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 you know and you know give them information about who they are and any other kind of wider groups that you've brought to the table, but your investor deck needs to be, you know, I would say 15 slides or 15 pages is enough, covering those pointers. And again, this is just about a flavor of who you are as as a company going into the market. Uh, I mentioned this at the beginning um, and mention again, uh, you know, management teams are very important uh, and, and they hold key, in fact, in many, many uh, fundraisers, because in fact, when the investor sits down, looks at the business, reviews the business, the one thing that will make them invest more than anything else is the people they're investing in. Because at the end of the day, they're buying into people more than businesses. If you are the right people with the right skill set, with the right vision, they are more likely to buy into you. Um, and if you uh, if you can translate that in your in your meetings and in through your presentations, then you're really on a positive note. You you're kind of going into these meetings on the front foot. Um, and half your work is done. Um, as I said before, nobody likes investing into one-man bands because, God forbid, if the investment comes in into this sort of uh, founder, entrepreneur who's carrying everything, and God forbid, if they fall ill um, or get um, diagnosed with some serious illness um, or get injured, um, you know, the business comes to a halt. And the, that nobody wants that, you know, the, and then the investment, the investors risk, sorry, investors investment um, is um, gone into, uh, you know, a huge kind of risk uh, into, and, 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 you know, they will then um, look for either replacing the entrepreneur or look to exit as soon as possible. 
uh, it's uh, I can understand sometimes if you're a startup, you don't need to, you know, you, you're not looking to hire full time employees from straight away. Um, you know, you're looking to kind of um, you're probably um, working on a shoestring budget uh, budget. Uh, so, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't have good people around you. Um, you know, you can still have, uh, you know, very capable people around you giving you that guide, that steer. Um, and, you know, these people could be part-time directors or non-executive non directors who you utilize maybe once a month, maybe once a quarter. But again, it shows that you've got a, a, a sounding board around you where you go to, you know, to seek direction or to bounce ideas or just to scrutinize your own kind of what's going on within the business. Um, and there's a, a team of people around you who can uh, kind of, you know, give you a collective uh, scrutiny of, of, of how to take the business forward. And it's just not you carrying everything uh, on your shoulders. Uh, and also it demonstrates to everybody around you that the business can carry on in your absence. So if you do need to take a holiday, if you do need to take a day off because you're not feeling well, the business can continue. Um, without there being a huge risk for the investor. Uh, that pretty much concludes uh, what I would say is the dummy's guide to getting investor ready. Uh, uh, and thank you for your attention and time. Uh, good luck with your investment journey. Uh, it's fundraising is a full-time job. And we often find entrepreneurs uh, who are, um, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, who are sort of go going to uh, go on this journey, end up, you know, it's almost having two jobs, you know, fundraising and running the business. So, uh, you know, good luck in your in your journey, and uh, we uh, open now for any Q and A's that you may have. Um, and happy to take any questions through the through the hub. Um, and as they come to us, um, I'll read them out and, and answer them as best to my ability. Uh, once again, um, I invite uh, anybody who viewed the session, who joined the session with us, to ask any questions they have, um, and I'll be more than happy to answer that. And, and you've got guys details there. If you want to follow up with any emails, um, feel free to email them over as well, and we will we'll take them offline if you want um, your questions to be. Uh, asked, uh, you know, in, in a closed forum. Uh, one question we've, uh, we've, we've just been asked, what's the difference between SEIS and EIS? So SEIS is the Startup Entrepreneurship Investment Scheme. This is uh, a tax uh, incentivized scheme for investors who are looking to invest into startups. Um, so this is aimed at the startup scene, technology or any other businesses uh, that are startups. If they get registered with the whole uh, with with HMRC and get this assurance certificate, it makes their uh, their business more attractive uh, to uh, the investors. And the EIS is just the Entrepreneur Investor Scheme for established businesses. Um, so, and again, that is a, a, another tax efficient um, investment vehicle for the investor 
because it gives them tax breaks and capital gains relief um, investing into businesses. So you've got for the startup scene, SEIS, and for established businesses, EIS. Right, okay, we've just had another question come through um, and I'll just read it out as, it, as it's been asked. One of the big barriers is just finding investors who are suitable. How do you advise finding and engaging these parties? Uh, that's a very good question. And the I think it comes back down to, I think you've got to be, uh, on the one hand, whilst you're looking for investment, you've got to be very particular of what kind of investors you're, you're looking for. Um, there's one term that's often used called dumb money. And that's basically where, you know, you're, you know it's just about pounds and pennies. Uh, you, and where the investor will come in, they'll be very passive, they, they'll put the investment in, but then won't really play any major role or um, have any hands-on kind of role in the, in the, in, in the company. Um, that might suit certain type of entrepreneurs, whilst others, um, not only they bring investment, they also bring their experience, they bring their know-how, they bring their kind of um, notebook with them, which has um, the capability to open up further doors. And those are very, well, you know, they're, they're strategic investors. Um, they may have other investments, which are part, uh, part of a portfolio and you coming into their, in, you becoming part of, their portfolio can be very st strategic for them, but also allow you to go um, and, um, and, and, and kind of go uh, and scale up that bit quicker. Uh, you, uh, you know, how to find these kind of people is, uh, you know, whoever you engage with in terms of, if you, if you look into appoint any kind of uh, funding experts or any, um, uh, other consultants make them aware of your kind of requirements and ask them when you kind of speak to them when you're engaging with them what type of investors do they have um, are they you know have they got people in certain sectors who may be uh, connected to your to your business or have they got general investors um, are they sitting abroad are they sitting in, within the UK are they regional are they national so you can, you know, you can do some um, fact finding with the people you go to do your fundraising with about what type of clients and investors they have. Uh, thank you for your presentation. What would be the right approach for the academic spin outs to identify appropriate investors and raise money? Um, I would say the first place to start would be the universities where you did your, um, your, 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 your incubation or any other programs that you did because universities always have a good in-house entrepreneur teams um, and they are normally, um, you know, part of uh, kind of, uh, kind of a small network of uh, either uh, sort of VC funds or part of a, a network of other universities and 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 other kind of um, early stage seed funders. Um, that I would start with my university, what network they've got, and and after that I would go to your kind of local network. Um, or for example, in Wales we've got places like Development Bank of Wales, Finance Wales, and 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 Business Wales, um, where. Again, these are kind of the, the, the first places I would go to, to see you know, where to seek um, uh, funding from. And within Development Bank of Wales, you've got um, Angel in West Wales, which is a private uh, uh, network of uh, angels. And, and that would be my place to start. Uh, and after that, I would explore SEIS uh, for university um, places, uh, university spin outs, and then Innovate UK is another good place to start because they're again, they're, they're a big uh, central government body who run a number of uh, programs all related to funding. Some are grant based, some are match funding, some are soft loans, 
So there's a whole raft of uh, funding available through Innovate UK. Uh, and I, again, and especially if you're academic, that is a, a good place to start for your, for your fundraising journey. How next question is how do you value an early startup uh, or or proof of concept or product? Uh, <laughs> it's it's um, a, a fine art, um, but again, you need to look at you know the sector you're in, the technology that you're developing, um, how much money you've you, uh, you've invested in uh, in in that proof of concept, in that prototype. Um, that is uh, also a good indicator. Look at any comparisons that you've got in your in your in your sector, who who may have done other similar uh, fundraises. Um, and so there's a comparison that you can go to and say, right, okay, you know, company A that were in your sector did a, a round of uh, fundraising. They did, um, and this is their seed round. This is their valuation, but it's also good to look at you know what what sort of um potential value you you can have in terms of you know your 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 financial forecasts you know what what forecasts are you predicting within your first year second year and third year that can also have some guide some element if you got any in your in your um any hard costs you've got any sort of um which will be uh part of your your kind of proof of concept so, you know, there, there, there are a number of factors that you can use, potential sales. Um, and if you've done any kind of beta trials, um, that is very useful because in that beta trial or that, or on that kind of proof of concept or prototyping, you may have had a, a, a month or a three month trial where you've basically, um, you know, it's, it's cost, let's say a pound for every usage, or if it's a free model where you've had a, um, you know, how many people have, have taken up your product in that kind of launch. Um, and again, you can have uh, a view on how to value that business. Uh, but, but what you don't want to do, um, and a lot of startups do this, um, you know, th they will value their business, um, let's say half a million and so forth. Uh, there hasn't been a sale made. It's pure technology driven. And that can be off-putting to the investor. If you're if you're looking to kind of um, you know the, the the normal round is around 150,000 pound, which is SEIS. You know, typically you're looking at 30 to 50 percent of giving away your company at that stage. So that is the typical scenario we're looking at. Um, you know, as uh, providing you've got all your you know your houses in order, you've got your technology. Uh, you've got your your IP. You know that's another way to kind of value your, your your proposition or an early startup. What IP value you've got? What you know um, digital assets you've got um, in the market, which can add value to you. Anybody else have got any other questions? Well, I think we, we we're coming to an end. So um, I would like to thank thank you all for this opportunity, um, for sitting in, listening, um, and um, posing the questions. They were really good questions. And, and I hope you found this session useful. You've got the email there um, um, on the slides. Um, I'll, if there's any further questions that come to mind once you walk away, feel free to reach us on our website or through to Guy's email, which is available on, on the slideshow there. Thank you for your time, and we wish you all the best on the journey ahead. Thank you for joining the Emerging Tech Fest. Join us again on our virtual live sessions, or watch us on playback anytime, anywhere.